this fuzz PCB project from several years ago is going to get put into an enclosure finally, along with an add-on tone control circuit. This board isn't even in working condition anymore. It used to have four potentiometers, but the wires keep coming off. There's currently no transistors plugged into the socket. There's supposed to be two trimmer pots, and I want to remove these experimental input, output, and power headers and make it all more permanent. So I need to maybe swap out, change some parts, add some parts to this to get it back to how it used to be. This is the schematic of the original fuzz circuit board based on the fuzz face type circuit. Two transistors and two trimmer pots to adjust to get the right biasing for experimenting with different transistors. The fuzz potentiometer controlling the amount of distortion. And there used to be a volume control pot from the output to ground. So I'm making changes on here from the original so I can add on the tone control circuit. But the first step is to restore this circuit board, get it working, breadboard the tone control, then try to start working it all into this enclosure. For testing, I'm using a T-style guitar, front single coil pickup, volume on maximum, and the Roland Cube 30 set for clean. And here's the top-down overview. Signal coming in, fuzz, tone control, and out. So I have restored this fuzz circuit. I hot glued for strain relief on the wires because all the moving around, they'll just break. And I have the two trimmer pots here to adjust biasing for the two transistors, which are sitting here in sockets. And I used to have this footprint for an optional capacitor here, but I never did use it, so I'm just taking it out. And right now, the two NPN transistors, the first one has a beta of 215, and the next one has a beta of 393, as measured on this component tester at least. With this added tone control, I have a 100k pot, and I can shift it between favoring bass or treble, or some blend of both. The way I'm doing that is I'm taking the output of the fuzz and sending it into this passive tone control network, and then this output of the tone control just goes straight to the amplifier. I didn't bother making this an active tone control, or at least putting a buffer, maybe with a little gain. I just left it like this, and I'll probably put a pot to ground in the final project enclosure for a volume control. But really, this is meant to be an ongoing project, so I will add more circuit blocks in the future. This tone control network has been used in other effect pedal circuits, which is where I got the idea, and I just experimented with component values to get the response that sounded right for this circuit. And right now this tone control is set somewhere in the middle, so it's not going to prioritize either bass or treble. It should be more neutral. So here's what the guitar sounds like clean right now without going through this circuit. Here's what it sounds like going through this fuzz. So I'll hit some more strings and I'll adjust the tone control so we can hear the difference as we go from bass to treble. So it's definitely functioning as a tone control, and hopefully when we put it in an enclosure it'll be less noisy.
this is as far as I currently am. The tone control board is directly attached to the tone control pot, and now I need to install the stomp switch with the LED. And a while ago I was working on octave fuzz, I'm still working on that, but I made this board to put the stomp switch and an LED, so we would connect ground, the audio in and out jacks into here, and the in and output of the effect circuit to here, so then this can switch between input jack going through the effect and to the out, or bypassing so the in jack goes straight to the out jack. The LED has to be at the correct height to line up in the enclosure, and some LEDs have shorter leads, so this one will barely fit. So I'm going to put this in the enclosure, get the switch into the proper position, then I'll push the LED down into the plastic insert. Now I just need to wire all of this stuff to the stomp switch and the jacks and grounding. That's going to be easier off camera, so I'll come back when I think it's all ready for testing. Two hours later. I finally got it put together. Cable management and neatness have never been something I am good at, but I just need this to work. This is the revised schematic with the original fuzz face type circuit and the new tone control prototype board added on with the high pass and low pass filters and the tone control and then a 500k pot to ground with the wiper giving the final tone control fuzz output. So in the original fuzz, this 500k pot to ground was after this output series capacitor. And I just stuck these two circuit blocks together since this was already on a board. So in the future, maybe what I might try is things like remove this DC block capacitor here and maybe put it after the tone control pot and going into the volume control pot. So I still get to block any DC, but maybe the tone control circuit would have a different impact on the signal because on this high pass section, we now have 100 nano in series with a 10 nano compared to just having the 10 nano from the tone circuit straight on the fuzz output. But for now, I'm leaving the circuit this way by treating this as if it's its own self-contained project in a box. And then I just add a tone control on a connector plugged into it where I don't have control over tweaking the interface between two circuits. And I also drew here the input and output audio jacks that will be on the enclosure and the three pole double throw stomp switch for sending the input to the effect or just bypassing straight from input jack to output. I drew the output jack as tip sleeve, two conductors for signal and ground, and the input has tip and sleeve for the audio and ground coming in, but it's got a switched tip contact as well, which is tied to ground. So here's the three contact terminals, and there is the switched terminal. So when I plug a connector in, it opens up that switched tip terminal, and we just have tip over here and sleeve connecting elsewhere in the connector. So by connecting the switched tip to ground, it's out of circuit when you're using the effect pedal, but when you unplug, now normally this input audio signal is just going to be open circuit and could get all kinds of noise, but now we've connected it to ground to keep everything quiet. So that explains this wiring here. And for this stomp switch, it's push on and push off. And right here, all three switches are drawn, making contact between the common terminal and the upper one. So that would be the on position for the effect. So we have our LED and resistor always at 9 volts on anode, and we switch cathode to ground in that position. So the LED comes on to show the effect is on. At the same time with the other two switches, incoming audio goes 
over here to the effect input, which is the input of the fuzz circuit. And on this upper switch, in the up position, FX out, which is the output of the fuzz and tone, that gets connected over here to the output audio jack. So the effect is on and the LED is on. If we press it again, these switches would be in the down position, so the LED is left floating and is off. The input to the fuzz circuit would be connected to ground, just to keep it quiet, even though it's not in circuit. And on the top switch, with this in the down position, the input signal cable is wired up here, and it goes to the output jack. So in bypass, audio just goes from the input over here and just straight to the output jack as if the pedal is just a wire. So push on, push off, LED tells you what state you're in, and that's how all of this is wired up inside the enclosure. I didn't follow a specific grounding path, I just made sure there were no closed loops. Coming from the negative terminal of the 9 volt supply, one ground wire goes from power to the ground on one audio jack, and there's another wire going to the ground on the other audio jack. Then from there, ground goes down to the fuzz circuit board. Then the audio out and ground go to the tone control board, and there's a ground wire going to the output volume pot. So that's the end of one chain, and there's also ground going from the fuzz board over to this on off switch and then that's the end of that chain so there's no area that ground will go back to an existing ground connection preventing ground loops so this is the audio in and audio out the signal wires here go to the on off switch and the audio in and final tone control out on the fuzz also go to this board and there's a 9 volt wire coming from 9 volts on the fuzz board, which is used to power the LED. So I'll turn this on with 9 volts. No smoke yet. And through the connection of the jacks being mounted here, the middle enclosure happens to be grounded, even though I don't consider it a valid ground path for circuitry. I have dedicated wires for that but grounding the metal enclosure might help shield against noise. And 9.3 volts. So far so good. The LED is on when I guess we are in on mode and it goes off. Now for how I set these two trimmer pots for the transistor bias, I've got a sine wave signal generator plugged in and it's only 20 millivolts peak to peak. Because any higher from the signal generator, the sine wave would always just be distorted. So this is the output of the whole fuzz pedal. I put the tone somewhere in the middle. If I go too far one way or the other way, the signal just gets more distorted. So I'm looking for more of a flat base and somewhat of a sine wave top. So that's with the fuzz distortion control all the way down to get it as clean as a fuzz can get. Maximum volume setting. So in the case of this specific circuit with these transistors, the first 50k pot, I have it all the way clockwise. Because if I go counterclockwise, we just start getting a distorted sine wave peak. So for example, with this setting, when I turn the distortion all the way up, I get a square wave. When I turn it all the way down, it's still distorted. And maybe that would be okay. I'd have to try it out with a real guitar signal, but I prefer to go so that I can get minimum gain settings, giving me as clean as possible. And then I can still turn up the distortion and get a square wave. Now the second trimmer pot for the second transistor, if I go all the way counterclockwise, we just have a heavily distorted signal. So as I change the distortion level, it's just always a heavy distorted signal. If I go all the way clockwise, eventually 
I'm getting no signal, so that's no good. So I just adjust it until, again, I have at my minimum fuzz distortion pot setting on the effect. I'm waiting until I have a clean sine wave just before it starts going square, so I know minimum distortion, I can get somewhat cleaner, and I can still turn up distortion and get a square wave. So that's just how I found it works best. This is audio in from guitar, audio out to amplifier. So those jacks still have barely enough clearance. Now I'll turn on the amplifier. The effect is off and everything is quiet. There's no hum like when I had all kinds of messy wires and things on the breadboard all open to pick up noise. So a test in bypass mode. And I'll set volume on max, tone somewhere in the middle, and fuzz almost all the way up and turn it on. seems to work. So I'll turn it off. Now I need to put the back cover on and some knobs on here and some labels to finish it off. Mm -hmm. 